Ladies and gentlemen, seekers of light and secret knowledge wherever you may be, you are listening to Points of Light Radio, the podcast dedicated to taking you past the apron and behind the closed doors of lodges everywhere. And here is your host, Stan Miller. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum. I hope you're having a great summer so far. And I'm happy to that you took some time out to spend with me here on Points of Light Radio and continuing our journey together. In today's segment of Points of Light Radio, we'll be investigating and shedding some light on an organization that we haven't touched on yet. And but that as usual here, you've probably never heard of this organization. And that organization is an order called the Military and Hospitaller Order of St. Lazarus of Jerusalem. Just to give you some insight, I'll start by saying that I really don't know how to fully describe this organization to you. This is why we have guests here on Points of Light Radio. But the military and Hospitaller Order of St. Lazarus of Jerusalem is an ecumenical Christian self-styled order. It was statuted in 1910 by a council of Catholics in Paris. Now, like I said, it's ecumenical today. The modern order claims to maintain the spirit and history of the medieval order of St. Lazarus. I'll allow my guests to expand on this as we go along. And I'm only encapsulating here, as I say, because this is a fairly deep organization that does a lot of wonderful work. The order has five thousand, approximately 5,000 members around the world. And the Order of St. Lazarus is one of the smallest orders of Christian chivalry. So it gives you an idea how many other people are in these orders, right? Their motto is, and I hope I say this properly, Atevis e Armius. It's a Latin phrase that means by ancestors in arms. My guest today, that'll be shedding a little light on this organization, is Jane Anima. This Anima is the Grand Prior of the Military and Hospitaller Order of St. Lazarus of Jerusalem here in Canada. Now, this really sounds intriguing, doesn't it? So let's go talk to Jane Anima. But as I always ask you, are you still thirsty for knowledge? Are you still searching for the light? Then just trim your lamp and follow me. Ma'am, welcome to Points of Light Radio. (laughs) Wow. Thanks for inviting me. (laughs) Well, first of all, why don't you tell my listeners and viewers about yourself? Uh, Well, um, I'm Jane Anima. I am currently uh, serving as the Grand Prior for the Grand Priory in Canada. Um, uh, The Order of St. Lazarus is um, a worldwide organization. Uh, It's in 36 different countries uh, around the world. Um, and Canada has actually one of the larger jurisdictions. So it's my honor and privilege to do that. A grand prior is actually a board chair. Um, that's the easiest way of explaining it. I am the CEO, effectively. Okay. So, now what it's, you- and it, by, it's a volunteer gig. I mean, I, you know, until very recently had uh, day jobs and stuff like that as well. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, but you're here today to talk about the military and hospitaller order of St. Lazarus of Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. So why don't you break this down a little further? Tell us about the order. What exactly does it do? What is, you know? Great question. Um, the order internationally has been around since oh, the late Crusades. It was founded based on um, a need uh, a hospitaller need, actually, uh, leprosy. 
And it's actually one of the pillars of the organization still is to support and try and eradicate, support those with leprosy and try to eradicate the disease. Um, so it's an important component of what we are. We've been around for a long time. Um, and each jurisdiction does things slightly differently. In Canada, I mean, uh, leprosy is a, a central focus around. We also work on um, time-honored traditions of chivalry, so manners, um, those types of things, of supporting the weak and afflicted. Um, we've got some, internationally got some work going on towards the Ukraine at this point. And what we hope will be the right side, which of course means that Ukraine will be Ukraine. Um, so that's that's part of what the international organization does. In Canada, we focus on uh, leprosy is a low level thing for us because although there are 300 lepers in Canada. Oh, really? Yeah, 300 active cases. Wow. Um, there are two leprosaria in the United States and three in Mexico, and most people don't know that. Um, and it is actually a disease that's on the rise to a certain extent uh, because of international travel. It's a bacterium. That's our lowest priority. Our highest priority, however, is providing funding and resources for hospice and palliative care. We have a book called A Caregiver's Guide, uh, which we've produced since about the year 2000. Um, it is actually a volume that talks about how one cares for a family member or a loved one uh, towards the end of their life. Um, and as we all know, the medical system is not necessarily designed for end of life. It's designed for acute care. And so we found that uh, caregiving is actually an important component. And so being able to support that is really an important for us, thing for us to be doing. Um, the third pillar that we have is an ecumenical. Uh, we are an ecumenical Christian charity of chivalry. And ecumenical in our terms means um, Lutherans, Catholics. Um, Orthodox, um, Anglicans, Baptists, um, United Church folks all coming together. I mean, I'm, that's 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 limited, yeah, all coming together to worship um, and learn. So we have not only our caregiver's guide and scholarships and bursaries for palliative care physicians and nurses, but also uh, 15 bursaries uh, parked at theological colleges across the country to help support students in that particular journey as well. So, well, now you say it's ecumenical. Do they do they allow like Muslims and Hindus and Sikhs into it as well? Not formally um, to be members. Um, that's an international dictum. In Canada, we have a secondary stream that we call Friends of the Order, um, and we can promote them through what we call our companionate. We do have some folks um, who have discovered us and who support the work that we do, even though they cannot be members. Okay. Now, Not formally at any rate. Informally, yes, absolutely. So. Okay. Now, so St. La Lazarus Canada consists of, uh, I read from your website, dedicated volunteers who generously contribute their time, knowledge, and skills to make our charitable activities and projects a reality and a success. Now, what special knowledge and skills do members of the order possess? Well, some of them's just a willingness to serve. Okay. Um, <laughs> lots of us have had pretty significant day jobs. I just retired as an executive director. And so I bring to the table a fair depth of knowledge about how charities work. Um, and the rules and regulations uh, related to that, you know, plus some governance pieces like that. We have lawyers, we have doctors, uh, we have nurses, um, all of whom come to the table. And so, for example, our caregiver's guide, um, which is downloadable off the website, it's also available in hard copy, um, is regularly reviewed by those folks in the membership who have the expertise to take a look and say, no, we might want to tweak this 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 uh, link, or we might want to do that. Um, our website's run by volunteer. Um, you know, those those types of things. Our graphics are all, you know, the work, the report that just went out, you know, this one that I sent you that should, is all done by volunteers. So basically, they bring those skills to the table. Um, and then, of course, we also turn around and raise money. Okay. And that goes back. 
So totally volunteer based, no national office, no or a little overhead. I mean, there are some overhead pieces when you're running a national organization, uh, meaning that, you know, you have to pay attention to directors and officers liability and, you know, some corporate corporate needs. Websites don't come for free. Um, you know, those types of things. Sorry, I should turn that off. And um, so we, um, yeah, so th that's what comes to the table. Now, is there a degree system to the order? Uh, there's a rank system. There, okay. Rank system. Most people join the order as um, either a, what we call a member, which is an MLJ, or an officer. And depending on the work they do and um, the contributions that they make, not necessarily monetarily, uh, we mo can move them up through a rank system. So, for example, when I joined, and it is 27 years ago now, 26 years ago, almost 27, um, I came in as an officer, an OLJ. Um, I took over a commandery and became a commander, um, although I didn't have to become a commander in order to be the head of the commandery, if that makes any sense at all. Yeah. Um, the next rank up is either knight or dame, depending on gender in the, or gender identification. I guess that's a better way of phrasing it. Um, either one of those two, that's sort of a, that we refer to that as the working rank. And that usually takes, oh, three, four, five years to get to. Um, oh. Occasionally, we'll let somebody in at that level, depending on what um, community service and recognition they've already got. Um, after that, you become either a knight commander or a dame commander, a KCLJ. And in my instance, because uh, I've been around for a long time and done a fair number of things within the order, um, I'm what's called a Grand Cross, which means I'm at the top of the rank structure um, as a GCLJ. Is there a ceremony for each? Oh, yes, there rank? is. There absolutely is. We do um, for knights and dames. Um, they're dubbed formally. I have a sword um, or the Grand Prior carries a sword or has a sword. There's banners, there's flags. They are. There is a vigil that goes on before investiture. Um, so people come to church and um, you know go through the kind of service that a knight in the old days would have gone through. Mind you, we don't do ritual baths and we don't cut anybody's hair, which knights in you know the early years would have you know the really early years would have done, but we don't do that anymore. What church? Um, it depends. It depends what where our it? chapter general, which is our annual meeting, is held. So it could be the vigil could be in a Catholic church, it could be in an United church, it could be in a Lutheran church. We did a ritual baths. Um, just once, usually. Okay. Once. Uh, this year's a little unusual. We've done two. You have to travel to where they're doing it. Yes. That is one of the expenses of the order is travel. Um, we have done, of course, during the pandemic, we started to do a lot of things virtually. Uh, we may continue to do some of that uh, because we go from coast to coast mm -hmm. to coast wow. with our commanderies. And so, you know, getting to the Arctic is not an easy feat. Right, coming down from the Arctic, everybody wants to do that. But again, it it, it we could probably spend that money better, yeah. um, uh, rather than travel. So that's been an opportunity. The pandemic was actually an opportunity for us to explore some things. How many commanders, by the way? Thirteen. Mm -hmm. uh, Newfoundland, Acadia, which covers off New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, uh, Quebec uh, proper, meaning the city, Montreal. So there's two in Quebec. Uh, Ottawa, Toronto has a commandery uh, with what we call a house, which is the northern part of, or the early part of northern Ontario. So we have a fair group of people living in Sudbury and North Bay. Um, Thunder Bay, uh, we have western Ontario. So there's a, a fairly substantial group living um, London, Windsor, Owen Sound, that KW, that, that part of um, one in Manitoba. Um, two in Alberta, one in Calgary, one based out of Edmonton, and then one in BC as well, and plus the Arctic. So we actually have one that's based currently in Yellowknife. Where do you meet, though? Like in a lodge, a church? Or... Um, well, actually, if it's a chapter general, it tends to be a hotel. Uh, okay. We've all traveled and have to stay somewhere. 
So our current board meetings, our current, uh, our AGM was last weekend. We did that virtually. Uh, but yes, they are those, those, the, the business meetings tend to be held as part of chapter general and they tend to be in a hotel. Um, we charge a registration fee, of course, for that. Monthly. Uh, uh, no, actually once a year. It's Let's called see. an oblation and you are required to pay. Well, if you don't pay your ob oblation, you're not considered to be in good standing, which means you can't be promoted and you can't be awarded because we also have an awards system as well over and above rank. Okay. So for example, I <laughs> did like it's okay. So you could come in as a member of merit, for example. Um, uh, and we actually regularly have people who have not joined the order come in as a member of merit because they've done the work of the order for us. Sometimes they like us so well, they actually turn around and become full members. And sometimes they just like to join us and that's fine too. Uh, we also have some bronze crosses and bronze um, and silver. And, you know, we have other ways of rewarding people for the work that they've done. So Now you mentioned COVID. What effect did that have on the order? Um, once we figured out that we were going to have to move virtually, Almost none. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, in that our numbers stay, uh, unlike a lot of volunteer organizations, our numbers actually stayed fairly stable. And part of that is because we're so spread out. Mm -hmm. And we've been used to communicating via email and via newsletters and those kinds of bits and pieces. And so we didn't lose any of that. What we did lose was the in-person gathering or the ability to gather as a larger group in person because, of course, each province did gathering restrictions quite differently um and of course there were pockets during covid when you actually could get together so the western ontario commandery for example managed to get together for a dinner in december um the ottawa commandery manages managed to do the same thing um because a uh, most of the commandery lives extremely close to one another in manitoba and their gathering restrictions were different. They actually could get together as well. And of course, we used Zoom and Teams and the technology to stay in touch. And so we've done a New Year's levy via um, Zoom uh, for the last three years. You know, it's just an opportunity for, and, you know, it's called the phone. We call one another. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, now I, I've heard from different uh, members of fraternalism that you learn a lot about yourself as you go along. What have you learned about yourself being part of the uh, order? Um, I learned what I've really cared about. Uh, I, and what's really, I guess what, what's really important at, at towards the end of life. Um, I was privileged to be with my parents um, during the last uh, week of their lives, um, and, and considerably more than that as well. And I guess what the order has actually given me is the power to advocate on behalf of folks towards the end of their life and uh, to help bring them joy. Because uh, it actually, I mean, as sad a time as it is, it can also be a very joyful time too. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, what do you think it could offer those looking to join? You know, that that we're looking at it as as a place they might go. It's an opportunity to meet some extraordinarily interesting people. Um, it's an opportunity to give in a very different way. It's not just about the money. Our actual dues are actually relatively inexpensive as these things go, um, and they are tax received. Um, it's an opportunity to make a difference. Um, at the end of life, in a theology student's uh, life. And yeah, actually, maybe, just maybe, I eradicate leprosy, you know, way, way, way along the line. So. And do you, do you um, what would you say, I, I, I should have asked this earlier, but what would you say the makeup of the order is? Are you finding that young people coming in, older? What? Um, it's interesting. Um, our average age is... Uh, mid six mid early to mid 60s uh, 
a number of members that have been around for a very long time. So I think our oldest current member is 96. Wow. Um, I saw him about two weeks ago, actually. Um, he actually, actually traveled to a regional investiture in Calgary. And he's looking forward to getting a guest with it. But he next year, where he'll be 97. Our youngest member, I think, is 22. Wow. Um, and so we run the span. Uh, we are open to men and women, which is sometimes an unusual thing in a fraternal organization on an equal and affirming basis. And I mean, the fact that I'm the CEO, the Grand Prior, as a female, and I'm actually not the first. <laughs> Uh, although it has been quite some time. Um, we're about 65, 35%, 65 male and about 35% female so, right now. And, you know, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's kind of an interesting, an interesting dy dy dynamic that way. What are your plans for the order now that, like you say, you're the Grand Prior? Um, well, um, we've had to spend a little bit of time kind of rethinking who we are and how we operate, um, just like most organizations. Uh, we are moving forward um, in that we are looking at a much broader base of membership than some than than might have been happened happened in the past. Um, we are actively looking at expanding the portfolio of a caregiver's guide to include whole caregiver support programs so that people can go online and learn, you know, okay, how, how do I do this? <laughs> you know, like, or that there's a, a, the ability to converse with somebody who's been there and done that and effectively got the t-shirt um, type of routine. So we are looking for things like that. We are bilingual and that's that colors our organization as well. And we're looking to actively support hospices. I know a great number of our members were involved in the hike for hospices um, to support those. A number of them sit on boards. Um, and we actually have two commanderies that are in the process of, of spearheading a build in their community. Well, we, we're not building hospices. That's not what the order <laughs> does. But they've taken the skills and the passion that they've learned from the order to assist their communities in actually creating a hospice setting. Ma'am, it's been a pleasure talking to you today and all the best to you. And I uh, thank you for appearing here. And all the best to you and the St. Lazarus Order, ma'am. Right. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, you can find us at www.stwrittenoutlazarus.ca. And we're always interested in conversation with folks. Thank you, ma'am. Bye-bye. Thank you. Jane and Ema, brothers and sisters. Let me ask you, have you ever heard of the Military and Hospitaller Order of St. Lazarus of Jerusalem? Right? Have you, I mean, it, it, you have to ask yourself, how many other organizations like this are there out there doing wonderful work and you know, that you've never heard of, right? I mean, I've often said this. The goal of Points of Light Radio when I started it was to raise the profile and preserve the history of many of these fraternal organizations. But, you know, in addition to doing that, it's wonderful that we've also had an opportunity to give some of these organizations, such as the St. Lazarus Order here in Canada, the recognition that they deserve. Because this is an organization that's doing a tremendous amount of great work. And just all of the things that my guest mentioned here on Points of Light Radio. Um, I'm sure I personally, until I uh, discovered this organization online. I'd never heard of it. And I, I'm happy, like I said, if I can contribute to anything, it, you know, over and above the original goals here is to give these organizations, like I keep saying, the recognition they deserve, right? And we'll continue as we go along in this journey of light and knowledge to continue to bring these organizations to your attention and, uh, like I said, give them some of that recognition. Right? But that's all for today, brothers and sisters. 
Before I go, I want to draw your attention to my Facebook page, the links to my Facebook page, as well as my Twitter handle here on Points of Light Radio, as well as the Points of Light Radio store. I also want to encourage you to continue to uh, share, like, and subscribe and leave your feedback when viewing Points of Light Radio on YouTube. But brothers and sisters, it's been a pleasure fellowshipping with you here today and my guest. But until we meet again, just step.